Hi. So what are all things that we have uh, studied in the HVAC designing and drafting classes that everything we are going to implement in our project. So we can start doing our project. So uh, as you remember in the heating and cooling load calculation class, we did the heating and cooling load of, of this uh, training room one. The same way all the other spaces report we have to generate. And uh, in the upcoming classes, we have already studied how to do the duct design, air terminal selection, ESP calculation, chilled water pipe sizing, refrigerant pipe sizing, all those things, ventilation, fresh air, makeup air, that everything, no? So the complete thing that we have studied in the design and drafting classes that we are going to implement here. So, okay. So what all things that we are going to implement here means like uh, heating and the cooling load calculation that we have already studied, then machine selection, okay? Then uh, we'll be placing the machine, then we'll be uh, routing the duct, we'll be selecting the air terminals, then after that we'll be sizing the duct, then ESP calculation we will be doing, then uh, chilled water uh, pipe routing, chilled water pipe sizing, condensated drain pipe routing, condensated drain pipe sizing. So in discussion rooms and all, we will be uh, providing the airflow rate by the help of VAV boxes only. So by the help of uh, technical data, of, data sheet of VAV, VAV block has to be created with respect to the flow rate. And uh, then uh, we have to provide airflow rate in discussion room one, two, three. And in the common area, including a lobby, corridor area, pantry, gents toilet lobby, ladies toilet lobby, there we have to select the linear type diffusers, then plenum sizing we have to do, flexible duct sizing, then a schedule we have to create, okay? And after the detailing we have to done, then once everything has completed, that will be like this, including ventilation, fresh air, makeup air, everything we have to, each space, how much fresh air has to be introduced, makeup air has to be taken. Then with the sheet setting, we have to finish everything. Okay, let's start. We can uh, start doing it. So in this, anyhow, it's a lengthy topic. It will take minimum uh, 10, 11 classes. Each classes will come like one hour, 30 minutes. Anyhow, in this video, in this uh, first session, I will be finishing this training room uh, one. In the further videos, I will be uploading like uh, other spaces, how I am doing it. Okay, all the other, other spaces like diffuser, different types of diffuser with respect to the space we have to place here and all we are using like a linear type. Here it is like a, which one, a square a rigid connection only. So rigid connection when we are uh, sizing it, when you are selecting it, what all consideration has to be considered to size this branch. And this is plenum box and how to size the plenum box for the square diffuser. And then plenum box here, all these things. Anyhow, we can start. I'm not wasting time. Okay. So we can uh, start our project. Means what all things that we have uh, studied till today, we will be implementing here. Project. I guess you still remember this space, training room one. We did heating and cooling load calculation in this space, right? So initially, I'll be starting with this training room one only. Okay. What all things uh, correct procedure? Before starting it, uh, why we are, how we are doing means like uh, first uh, we should do the heating and the cooling load calculation. The initial step is we should do heating and the cooling load calculation. Okay. Heating and the cooling load calculation. Initially, we should do the heating and the cooling load calculation. Okay. The, the second thing we have to place our machine. Okay. We have to select the machine. And after that, we have to do the duct routing. Okay. We should do the duct routing. Then we should do, we should select the air terminals. Okay. Then uh, we should size the duct. Then ESP we have to calculate external static pressure, then we should create the schedule. Okay, these things we can do first. Heating and cooling load calculation of uh, this uh, training room one, we have already finished before. I guess you still remember, right? In this space, we have already finished. I'm just going to the HAP. See, leak cooling, ventilation, I'll be proposing separate machine only. Ventilation, I'll be proposing separate machine. Okay, so leak cooling, so what I did means, I just went to the space, uh, training room one, uh, this one I am, ventilation I am removing, training room one only AC in this space. This ventilation side I made zero, rest everything I, because I don't want ventilation there. Ventilation is definitely I need it, but I'll be proposing separate machine for ventilation. Okay. 
and i'm just going to the system training room one only ac i'm just going to the sound component check it is training room only ac only and sizing that everything we have applied already before click okay generate the report right click print and view design result preview how much we are getting 13.4 kilowatt okay total coil load nan 15 liter per second ventilation outdoor ventilation air data is zero because except the ventilation all the load this machine will take it okay nan 15 liter per second so 13.4 kilowatt nan 15 liter per second correct okay so after the heating and the cooling load calculation now since it is a tender drawing i'm doing like a consultant layout but if you are working in a contracting company, as per the heat load report, we have to go to the technical data sheet. From the technical data sheet, the machine has to select, has to be selected. And as per the model number, the block has to be prepared or the block has to be collected from the supplier. Accordingly, we should do the remaining thing. But for time being, I'll be using the available block only. Consultant layout, when we are making, we'll be using the available layout only. But when we are making the shop, this is tender drawing I'm creating, but in the shop drawing concept. Shop drawing them when we are making in the company, the real block you should use. For time being, I'll be using the available block. That's the only difference. Okay. So here you can see within this training room one, I'm having diffuser they have already proposed. Supply, return, supply, return, supply, return, supply, return, like that they have placed it. If you want to interchange it, after this discussing with the architect, we can change it if you want to interchange means this one if you want to make the supply this one you can if you want to make the return we can do that no problem okay so now where we will be placing our machine anyhow by placing the machine in the middle side okay after that the duct will be going here then the duct will be going like this then the duct will be going this by flexible duct that is possible but it is not the way to do the ducting right where we will place the duct either we can place the duct here sorry not the duct machine there or we can place the machine here you should not place the machine uh, in the middle side because ducting will be complicated either you can place it here or you can place the machine here or you can place the machine here otherwise you can push, place your machine there four points this not mandatory to keep the middle point between the diffusers if you want to slightly move in the left side or right side no problem as per the side condition we have to do it we can anyhow for this project like uh Finish the floor level to the bottom of slab to the fall ceiling that is 2.7 meter we are having. Correct. Until the bottom of slab we are having 3.9 meter. So we are having nearly 1.2 meter of fall ceiling here in this project. There is not an issue. We are having sufficient fall ceiling height. 1.2 meter we are having. Okay. See. Uh, where I will place it. Anyhow, when we are placing your machine, the cooling medium also has to be considered. Anyhow, uh, in this building, it's a five-story building, G plus four only. We are having ground plus, first plus, typical flows, then until the roof level. So the ton of refrigeration will come like just less than 200 ton only. So VRV, VRF machine is sufficient here. VRV, VRF, so whether it is VRV, VRF system, or if it is a chilled water system concept, whatever it may, uh, normally the machine might be located in the uh, roof side. A roof side. Or if it is a chiller, then chiller might be located in the chiller plant room or in the basement. From there, through shaft only, the chilled water pipe will come. Wherever we are having shaft here. See, here we are having a shaft. Here we are having another shaft. One shaft we are having here. Another shaft we are having here. One shaft we are having here, another one we are having here. These are the shaft we are having in this floor. But since this is a toilet area, this shaft we have to use for toilet means drain line, uh, drain waste vent application. Okay. Anyhow, either this one or this one or this one you can use for chilled water pipe or refrigerant, whatever it may. Normally, suppose when we are placing our machine, our machine should be, if it is possible, you have to place your machine very near to the chilled water route. From here, the main chilled water pipe I will be having, chilled water supply and return. Then I'll be taking to the lobby. Then through the corridor only, I'll be taking my pipe. It's a corridor. And suppose if I am placing my machine here, another machine if I am placing here, the next one if I am placing here, the length between the chilled water supply and return pipe to the main connection will be minimum. No, minimum. So the installation cost we can decrease there. Why we are not taking through this area? 
filled water pipe if it is possible we can take through training room 1 or training room 2 or whatever we can take it like that but the problem if you want to do some maintenance you have to evacuate this area right but since the pipe is going above the fault ceiling if you want to do some maintenance you have to evacuate the area then only you can do the maintenance so the function will be affected but if the service is going through the corridor and all even if in emergency if the spaces are working means we can work in the corridor area it will not affect the what function within the space correct that's why as much as possible take the services through the corridor or common area without affecting the performance of other spaces okay so that's why whether it is a refrigerant piping or if it is a chilled water piping i am planning to take it take the pipe through the corridor only means from the uh, main from the shaft it will be coming from the shaft see i will be doing this project by uh, chiller concept only so that you can study the chiller but at the same time we are we we are pipe sizing also i will explain this one i will be doing by uh, by chiller concept so that we can study the chilled water pipe routing pipe sizing everything okay so let's say this is my chilled water pipe so i when i am considering the training room one i can place my machine here that's the nearest point right because chilled water pipe will be too minimum there comparing to all the other three location but the problem say i am having one supply diffuser here another supply diffuser here single line that is fine when you are drawing the single line okay one supply will be connecting there another supply will be connecting here one supply will be connecting there then the other branch will be connecting there single line that is fine but when you are making in a two dimensional layout okay 2d see my starting duct will be coming like this correct then it will be coming like a straight line for here i am having a supply diffuser okay this supply we can connect there like this this supply also we can connect if it is possible like this what about this one this is coming back only no anyhow through the mouth it is not possible to connect after the mouth from the machine mouth 1 feet 6 inches after 450 mm only you have to take the connection even if that 450 mm is coming within the taper from the taper joint we are not going, going to take any connection to the diffuser so after the taper you can take it but even if if you are taking how you can connect this to the diffuser you have to take a duct like this okay from the duct flexible duct you can connect flexible duct or from here you can make an elbow by the help of elbow you can make a rigid connection there rigid connection means from here we can take an elbow then in that elbow we can connect it a rigid connection but the problem if the air is flowing in the straight side you know just this is you can see opposite side no it is air is flowing through the straight line it is coming backward opposite direction of flow as much as possible you have to prevent it there is no other solution as per the site condition you can use that but if it is possible to avoid the back flow you have to prevent it so that's why this is not a good location because ducting will be too complicated so that's why i'll be placing my machine either here or here so that i'll be getting enough space to take the duct okay i'll be placing my machine here only okay let me start so i'm selecting a a new layout okay autocad dot dwt first step you have to set your unit un vendor okay precision 0 0 this one millimeter millimeter okay and base point base point has to be corrected so whether the xrf this xrf i am just going to load xrf that i am going to load uh, this one. okay make sure that uh, this is like zero zero point correct base point base is zero 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 so that is not an issue so okay now we can link it i'm just going to this drawing xa ender attach your xa ender okay and uh, now hvac project this architecture open it see uh, on screen point one 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 insertion point zero 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 okay now you can see exactly there i got it this is my x rough the zero zero point i don't want this grid in the background i want i'm hiding it i don't want that 
Okay. See, base point you have to consider always. Okay. Now what I have to do, the color code I have to change. The color code I have to change. So I will be going to the layer property, color. And all the extra color, color number 253 I am providing. Color number 251, 252, 253, 253. So that I can make it like a gray one. Control A, not one. Click inside Control A. Color number 253. So that I can make it like a gray in color. Okay. And you can see this is our... Uh, supply diffuser and return diffuser that we can place separately just above this one we can place so let me open this architecture extra i'm selecting my supply diffuser and i'm selecting my return as well Control c copy this one and i am pasting it there okay i'm just going to a layer property i'm just creating a new layer okay I'm creating a new layer. New layer group you can create here. Okay. I will be creating which one that is my HVAC layer. Okay. Create new layers. I'll be creating uh, HVAC supply square diffuser. Okay, then HVAC return square diffuser, HVAC supplier duct, HVAC return air duct is not mandatory, the transfer air duct can come, TAD, in the upcoming it will come, then HVAC supply linear slot diffuser can come. HVAC return linear slot diffuser can come. HVAC supply square diffuser plenum can come. HVAC SLD plenum can come. All the other we can thermal insulation, everything we can create later. Like HVAC FCU can come. Fan, coil, unit can come. Okay. Now all this by clicking and holding the control key. All this HVAC I will be dragging to this layer. Okay, these are my HVAC layer. Okay, so HVAC supply square diffuser. This one. That's a color number I will be providing uh, this. Okay. HVAC return square diffuser. I will be placing the color... Uh, which one must be your convenience? Let's say this one. Okay. Now we can supply. I will be changing into HVAC supply square diffuser. Since it is a block exploded, select it. HVAC supply square diffuser. Then you can change that into a return square diffuser. Okay. Now I am selecting my supply. Copy this one with respect to the midpoint. So this is my supply. 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 The same way. Return if you want to provide any separate color, you can do that. Later also. So that is our return. 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 Okay. Supply and return I have connected there. Now I'm just going to place my machine. So machine block I am copying some other drawing. This one is a block I am going to use. Okay. So select this one. Control C. Copy. Or you can go to copy to clipboard option. But I am selecting this one. Okay. Paste it, control V. Okay. Select this one. This has to be changed into HVAC FCU. Okay. If you don't want this much bigger one, 
as per our because it is just a available block i have copied in the drafting class with respect to the model number we have created correct so that's why when we are selecting the machine with respect to the model number we have to make it and how this is okay but the mouth is coming how much okay i'm just going to the dimension style One four two eight. If you want to change it, one point four meter. If you want to change it, you can. We can anyhow this much. Keep it there. So I'm just going to place it. Since I'm having enough height there, I'll be placing in the middle point. Let's say I'm make, making a reference line. I'm just making a reference line to get the midpoint. So between these two diffusers, I'll be making a reference line. From the center point, I'll be making a line like this. Where is the center point? This one. Make sure whether that is center point or not. Y means select the line. Sometimes it might not be center point. From here to here, what's the distance? 2.4 meter. You can see that is 2.4 meter. From here to here, it is also 2.4. That is fine. Correct. Center point only. Now I'm selecting my machine. Copy. Okay. Now you can select this one. You can place it there. Fine. Now you can move to this side. Means minimum distance we need now from the machine. Minimum distance from the wall we should maintain 300 mm at least. If you are getting higher than 300, that is fine. So let me take it M enter and I'll be moving to that side minimum 300. Okay. So I did the heat load. I selected the machine and I have placed my machine. The next one. I have to root my duct. I'll be rooting my duct. See, I'm just going for rigid connection here. A rigid connection. So, but flexible also, I will explain. Okay. So, I'm just selecting HVAC SAD layer now. I need a different color there. Color number 70. Okay. Make it current layer. I'm taking a line or polyline because polyline we need if you want to apply the global width. Select it. Okay. Now from the center point, again, we can make a straight line. So supply, I'm connecting like this. Okay. So unwanted lines, we can from TR double ender. This line you can delete. This is my doctor line. The next step, we should do some calculation. Okay. I did the heat load. I've selected my machine. I placed my machine. Since already in the RCP, the diffuser location was there. I did the doctor routing. Now, I should do some calculation. I'm just selecting the HVAC. An Excel sheet. Let's say that is my training room one. Training room one. What's the total coil load? Total coil load from the report we can take. Print on to view design result. Preview. 13.4 kilowatt. How much ton it is? 13.4 kilowatt. How much tons of refrigeration it is? That is equal to uh, kilowatt divided by 3.516. One ton is 3.516 kilowatt. That is 3.8 tons of refrigeration. Available or not? So one machine is more than sufficient. If it is coming higher than 5 ton, that will be difficult. Because fan coil unit or ductable split is single machine capacity maximum it is at the standard it is available is 5 ton only. 5 ton. It doesn't mean that above 5 ton is not available. Some Panasonic mech and all even 8 ton is also available. Not standard normally we are considering 5 ton when we are proposing it. Okay, that is fine. And what about the airflow rate? Airflow rate we are having 915 liter per second. The amount of air has to be circulated through the cooling coil to extract 3.8 ton is 915 liter per second. How much CFM it is? 915 divided by, sorry, 915 multiplied by 2.119. Correct. So you can convert that into cubic feet per minute. I'm selecting my air terminal now. I'm selecting my air terminal. Before, no, selecting, the air, before selecting the air terminal, 
at present how many supplies we are having there 1900 and something cfm we have to distribute by the help of by the help of 1 2 3 4 number of supply diffusers four supply correct so i am selecting that that's why available number of diffusers now like how many number of diffusers i am having number of diffusers supply i'm saying number of diffusers supply we are having four four numbers now cfm per diffuser cfm per diffuser 1938 cfm has to be delivered by the help of four number of diffuser so cfm per diffuser will be 1938.89 8.9 divided by 4 how much it is 484 cf so now i got the diffuser flow rate the next one what is the nc value okay what is the maximum delivery velocity we can consider okay means delivery velocity through the diffuser not the duct okay nc value from the air master catalog page or ashray 2011 chapter number 48 sound and vibration or uh, even uh, every manufacturer will be providing in the engineering data and the starting table so from air master page number 1.17 you can take it okay page number 1.17 let's say training room if office only this one office training room is not there but office conference room is there this one you can consider means like conference room the same criteria office building conference room see nc levels medium how much it is 30 decibel the same remember The same we can consider nc is 30 decibels okay maximum permissible delivery velocity from the page number factory tested value page number 1.7 you can find page number 1.7 this one table number 6 in page number 1.7 same concert hall auditorium the uh, air terminal selection we have discussed this library classroom meeting room training room conference room the same criteria you can consider concert hall auditorium library classroom how much 2.5 to 3.5 value less than 2.5 is okay higher than 3.5 is not permissible so 3.5 meter per second sorry 3.5 meter per second is a maximum velocity we can consider there how much feet per minute it is 3.5 into 196.8 okay that will be 3.5 now i have to go to the air master catalog the next size of diffuser has to be selected i am just selecting this one item number 6 airflow data four way this is one way two way three way four way okay four way cfm per diffuser is how much so i need that value cfm per diffuser as per training room one cfm uh 484.72 nc value 30 decibels velocity is 3.5 meter per second correct okay now we can come to this table select which one i can cfm 484 150 150 no no because nc 36 300 300 even nc 476 CFM 476 NC is coming 33, 375 by 375, okay, 375 by 375 next size, 595 CFM NC is coming 28 only. Our requirement is 484, so less than this will come. Delivery velocity is less than 2 meter per second. So which neck we can select? Next size will be 375 by 375, okay. So next size will be. Diffuser next size is three seventy five into three seventy five. Okay, so I have selected my diffuser. The next thing, ductive flow rate I should mark. Ductive flow rate in liter per second I should mark. Starting branch I am having nine fifteen liter per second. Starting branch I am having nine fifteen. Okay, so I am just creating a new layer. So that is my HVAC. sad text the same color i am providing there color number 
ओके सो लेट मी सेलेक्ट दिस वन सप्लायर डक्ट नाइन फिफ्टीन लिटर पर सेकेंड ओके लेट मी सेलेक्ट इट बोल्ड आई नीड द कलर टाइम्स न्यू रोमन now we can place it you know the starting still if you want to increase the dimension okay sad 950 what about the individual branches anyhow the fluoride we should deliver through the individual branches is with respect to the diffusers only for cfm per diffuser is how much 480 4.721 okay or we can divide from here correct 915 liter per second divided by 4 same only this one so this value divided by 2.119 how much we are getting 228.75 228.75 you should not mark you can round that into 229 okay i'll be rounding that into 229 so 229 liter per second here 229 then 229 here 229 here as well 229 here what about here 229 plus 229 that is uh 4 15 correct 229 into 2 that is 4 58 okay 484.721 cfm no cfm per diffuser is how much 484.72 cfm so we are we have converted that into liter per second how much 228.75 decimal you should not mark there in the duct branches 228.75 like that decimal you should not mark it you can round that into 229 so i am rounding that into 229 so this will be 4 58 Four fifty-eight liter per second, and uh, so here it is. Four fifty-eight into two. Four fifty-eight into two. It is nine sixteen. So one liter per second difference will come in the starting. So when we are adjusting like that, it will come correct because decimal we should avoid in the branches because we will not be marking like a two twenty-eight point seven five or one six four five. No, it should be a round figure in the duct branches. Okay, so what I did, let me save this now. So, okay, now I I need to size it. See, I'll be as you know, one point two meter of false ceiling I'm having. I will be trying for aspect ratio one duct here. aspect ratio 1 but acoustic insulation i will consider in the starting only in the starting other branches i will not consider it 916 liter per second let me uh, select the duct size sir okay as you know what is the maximum permissible duct velocity i can consider for this branch same for nc30 how much it is 6 meter per second only in the duct sizing class we have discussed this one i don't know whether you remember this or not in the duct sizing class we have discussed for the nc that we need in that conference room or training room is how much nc maximum recommended duct air flow velocity is duct located within occupied space or above false ceiling nc 30 that will come for rectangular duct between 7.4 and 4.8 so 7.4 plus 4.8 by 2 that will be 12.2 by 2 that will be 16 6.1 meter per second means 6 meter per second So the maximum permissible velocity in the starting duct should be six meter per second or less. Any value less than six is okay. Okay, that's a six meter per second. You have to consider that. So I'll be considering point eight pascal per meter. In point eight pascal per meter for nine sixty liter per second, the velocity is okay, less than six. Then I'll be following point eight pascal per meter. Otherwise, I will decrease from point eight. Okay. For example, I am selecting this one. I am changing the unit into metric. flow rate is 916 liter per second head loss i am considering 0.8 pascal 
Equivalent round duct diameter, I am getting 454. Fluid velocity is how much? 5.6. Okay, right. If this fluid velocity is coming higher than 6 meter per second, then I will be decreasing this from 0.8 to 0.7. Or I will be changing that into 0.6. Or I will be changing that into 0.5. Until I am getting the velocity as per my requirement, I will be adjusting it. So once that is finalized, 0.5 Pascal per meter, this 0.5 Pascal per meter remaining for the all the branches I will be maintaining. Okay. But anyhow, in our case, 0.8 I have tried. 0.8 is okay, right? I am getting 5.6. I can go up to 6 meter per second. 6 meter per second. That is fine. So 0.8 Pascal per meter for the entire duct branch I can follow. Equal friction only I am following here. Okay. And the equality diameter is 454. So if you need aspect ratio of one duct, a value that is very near to 454 you have to provide. But that should be multiple of 50. 450 other dimension you will be getting 375. 400 other dimension you will be getting 425. What do you have to do? 450, 400 you should try. Correct. You should try. Uh, no need, no need. Even if, if you are changing that into 25 degrees Celsius, what change is going to happen? Correct. I have selected 20 degrees Celsius of air at standard temperature and pressure. The equivalent diameter I am getting 454.8. Fluid velocity I am getting 5.6. I am changing that into 25 degrees Celsius. Just one mm difference. Any change in velocity? Head loss is 0.797. Final head loss. Here it is 0.796. Any changes is happening there? Nothing, right? Not much changes. Very negligible changes only will happen there. But huge density variation, it can come. So here it is not a big issue. Okay. But you can, even if you are changing that into 25 uh, degree Celsius and 50 percentage relative humidity, fine, you can change, no problem, but not mandatory. Okay, so if you are maintaining 450 other dimension, you'll be getting 450, 400, we can try. So 450 is the dimension I'm getting. 375, 375, either you can round into 350 or you can round into 400. When you are rounding into 350, the velocity will be increasing into 6.2. 6 so not possible. So you have to do what? When you are providing 450 other dimension, you will be getting 375. Multiple of 25 duct normally we are not using, right? So that's why 375 you can round into 400 now. 350 velocity is increasing. So I'll be rounding. When you are rounding this into 400, what about the velocity? 5.4. This one you can maintain. Width I am maintaining 450. Height I am maintaining 400. So select this one. So, duct dimension I need there, width 450, height 400. But when I am marking in the starting drawing, I will be marking that as 500, 450. Why? Because I need that. Acoustic insulation 50 mm more relevance I should consider. The velocity is 5.4 meter per second. 5.4 meter per second, sorry. Velocity 5.4 meter per second. Okay. Head loss 0.8 only. Slight variation will come 0.723. Okay. No problem. Meter per second. Okay. Okay. Now you have to make sure that in any branch, the velocity should not go higher than 5.4. If this 458 liter per second branch, the velocity is coming higher than 5.4, there may backflow there. Okay. That's my starting. What about the branch duct? When you're sizing the branch duct, see, as I told, if, since I'm having enough fall ceiling height, here I'll be going for rigid connection. Means this is my main duct. Okay. From the main duct. And this is my diffuser only. So I'll be making a rigid draw. Then I'll be connecting to the diffuser. What about the diffuser neck size? Diffuser neck size is 375 into 375. Correct. So from the duct bottom, I'll be making... A 375 by 375 hole, then only I'll be taking the drop right. So that's why this side is not a problem because we are having enough length there. Width is a problem. So if you want to make, when you're considering from the top side, I need to make a, from the bottom of side, docked, I, I need to make a 375 by 375. Actually 5 mm higher than that. 5 to 10 mm higher than that, I have to make the drop, but no problem. You don't want to mark that in the drawing. 375 by 375 minimum hole I have to make, no? So duct is having enough length there. That's why this side is not an issue. Here it is an issue. If you want to make a 375 hole, the width of this duct should be minimum 
375, right? But the problem, if the hole that you are making same as 375, when we are connecting this drop, duct to drop, we will be placing a collar there. Okay, in the duct sizing class, we have discussed. We will be placing a collar there. After that, the collar, we, we have to hammer in the sideways. We have to hammer it. Hammering here, hammering there, hammering here, hammering here. This is not an issue. But hammering in this side, 25 mm minimum allowance here, 25 mm minimum allowance here. So that's why if your diffuser neck size is 375, you need 25 plus 25, 50 mm. Yeah, shoe collar, shoe collar, exactly. You need 25, 25 elements. So 375 plus 25, 375 plus 25. So minimum duct width you need for 25 mm. But as you know, multiple of 25 duct normally we are may not purchasing. Multiple of 50 we have to purchase. That's why if you want to make a rigid connection, a rigid duct drop, a collar from the duct bottom, width of this duct should be, minimum width should be how much? For 50 mm. Then only you can take the drop there. For 50 mm you need. Keep that in mind accordingly. Maximum how much you can go? Maximum since this branch is having, since this, this duct is having an external height of 450, maximum permissible height of this one, I can go up to 400, 50 mm less than this. Then only the collar I can connect here. Correct. So, But that is height restriction. Maximum height is 400. Minimum width is 450. At least 450 should come. Then only I can connect the rigid connection. Okay. Keep that in mind. Now, 229. So let me select this one. 229 liter per second. How much width I need minimum? 450. Width I need minimum 450. Other dimension I will be getting 150. Velocity I am getting 3.8. Fine. No problem. If it is a velocity reduction method, we will be decreasing less than 3. But it is okay. How much? So width if you need 450. Other dimension we need 150 there. Clear? There is no other option. Aspect ratio 1 is not possible here. Correct. Anyhow, it is not 4. So, 450, 150. This will be 450, 150. Okay. So, all the individual, I need the same. 450, 150. This also I need. 450, 150. But, if it is practically possible to provide the rigid correction everywhere, you can provide it, no problem. You can, but this one I am planning to provide a uh, flexible with the plenum box. A flexible with the plenum box I will be trying there. 229 liter per second. Why? Just for class, just for your understanding how, how the connection will come. If it is in real scenario, if it is practically possible to provide uh, rigid connection, you can try that. But to make the rigid connection, at least from the bottom of duct to the diffuser, you need minimum height, like a 300 to 450 mm height you need there. In If the height is very restricted, rigid connection is not possible. Flexible only we are using. So this one, I'll be planning uh, for flexible duct. How the flexible duct can connect? Suppose when you are considering your duct, flexible duct, you can cut from the side. Okay. Flexible duct is okay with the bottom also. If it is flexible duct, we can cut from the face as well. But since the velocity is very high, as much as possible, if it is avoided, you can do face connection because directly the air is flowing this way. No? Velocity will be high. So it may create some noise. But duct, you should flexible duct, you should, you should not connect from the tops. Correct. Because the fluid that we are having within is air. Outside is also air only. So air, sometimes it will not be rising upside. You can see this is cold air only inside. Outside we are having a hot air. Correct. So cold air is having more density. More density. Hot air is having less density. So hot air will be rising upside. Cold air will be always having the tendency to flow down. So that's why uh, air will not be rising upside. But... Fan can push it, no problem. Fan can push it, but fan can, fan have to do more job. So, 
from the top side you have to avoid it as much as possible it is space also a matters right so normally we will be cutting from the duct side only that, that's a phase because when you are cutting from the bottom the this, this is your fall ceiling level sometimes if the space is too restricted your from the bottom of duct to the fall ceiling if the space is too limited your flexible duct will be congested there phase the velocity will be directly momentum velocity issues can come side is fine so i'm also planning to cut the flexible duct from the side okay that's why if you want to cut it from the side you should not take it in the backward direction because air is flowing this side so branch should be somewhat near here i am planning to propose it okay here i am planning to provide it after that i will be selecting first i need to find the flexible duct diameter flexible duct diameter you can size using this one no problem but flexible absolute roughness value of flexible duct is different only when we are calculating the esp this value has to be considered accordingly the fan has to be selected that's only problem okay flow rate of 229.8 pascal per meter what diameter flexible duct velocity always try to maintain this 3 okay 3.8 fine so this is like uh, 269 flow rate if it is 229 head loss 0.8 pascal per meter when you are trying the equivalent diameter this is a round duct diameter this one you can consider as your flexible 269 means 269 standard dimension of flexible duct will start from 100 okay 150 200 250 300 350 400 um, until 600 like that it will come up to this range we are using because suppose if this is your diffuser okay above the diffuser we have to place a plenum box in the plenum box only we are connecting the flexible duct the flexible duct diameter is increasing plenum box height also has to be increased so above fall ceiling it will be considering taking more spaces that's why since you are getting the equality diameter of 269 you should select a 300 flexible duct 300 one correct 300 you should select or if the flexible duct diameter is 300, your plenum height, you need at least 350. Then only the flexible duct collar we can connect there. Another problem, right? So your plenum height will increase. If you want to minimize it, what you have to do? No problem. Instead of single flexible duct, you can try two flexible duct. The flexible duct diameter is getting 300. As per the site condition, it is not possible to connect 300 flexible duct because the plenum height is increasing. Instead of single flexible duct, we can try two flexible duct. How? Flow rate you have to divide. Now, 229 liter per second, we are delivering by the help of single flexible duct. That's why we are getting 269. But we can provide by the help of two flexible duct. The flow rate we can divide, right? Means 229. 229 divided by 2. Now the flexible duct the flow rate is 114.5. Okay. 114.5. Diameter, equal diameter will be decreasing into 208. 208 you can round into 200 200 that one you can use now instead of 300 dia single flexible duct 200 dia two number we have, we have to use accordingly the plenum has to be sized okay so flexible duct flow rate you can otherwise i will give you one uh, from the reference project also we can take a lot of general details it is there for example Okay. With respect to the flow rate, we can uh, select it. Clear. So, here you can see uh, the flexible duct. As per SMACNA, the length should be limited to 1.5 meter. With respect to the airflow rate, 0 to 60 liter per second, 150. Okay, 60 to 100, 100 mm flexi is also available in the market, but rare only we are using. 60 to 100, that is 200. 100 to 160, that is 250. See, 229, how much we need? Our requirement is 229 liter per second. So, 229 liter per second, we need what flow rate? 160 to 250, the diameter will be 300 mm. Correct. 300 dia flexible duct we need there. So whether you are taking from here or you are taking from here, 229 
meter per second you are getting 269.8 millimeter 269 is not there either 250 or 300 definitely if you are rounding that into 250 the velocity will be again increasing always it should be less than four or three okay so i'll be going for 300 only if you are going for single one okay or 300 mm if you are using a single one if the plenum dimension is increasing what you have to do instead of a single plenum single flexible duct two flexible duct you can do that is rare normally i'll be trying that one normally single flexible duct is easy only i'll be trying two flexible duct accordingly the plenum i will size okay so let me i'm planning to provide a two flexible duct anyhow i'll be making a polyline here this is my duct only and the distance between this will be less than 1.5 meter now it is how much 1.12 that is fine no problem keep it there okay so it is clear that the flexible duct that i am going to use is 200 m 200 m 200 mm two numbers 200 mm i have to cut from this side this duct when you are considering this one is having from the side from this side i am having two flexible duct connection what's the diameter of flexible duct 200 see if you want to cut 200 dia flexible duct from the duct side correct what should be the diameter of your duct this one collar is 200 mm no 200 mm then what should be the minimum height i am planning to cut it from the height only the flexible duct collar or diameter is 200 mm your duct height should be minimum 250 mm. Then only you can connect your collar. Then the hammering you can do there. Not 400, 200 mm. Means if your flexible duct diameter is 200. Correct. First collar here, next collar here. Two collar I am connecting. Correct. So what about the height? Height matters. Length is not an issue. This is not an issue, issue because we can increase it. Height matters. Since it is, suppose instead of 200, if I am using 300, 300 then the plenum will be 300 okay means the not plenum this collar will be 300 height will be 350 so if this height if this duct height is 350 this duct i need minimum 400 then only here i can connect the shoe collar correct so that's a problem but it will be difficult there the problem is for 229 liter per second for 229 liter per second if one side if you are providing 350 other dimension is 150 this aspect ratio one okay you can provide it but I, i'll not i'll not be using this uh, single flexible duct i'll be using two flexible duct only so since the flexible duct diameter is 200 okay i have to place my flexible duct collar there then i have to hammer it top side bottom side that's why the height should be 25 mm elements in the top side 25 mm in the bottom 25 mm in the right and 25 mm in the left is not an issue because that is affecting the length only we are having enough space there height matters okay so the minimum height i need there how much it is flexible duct diameter is 200 the height i need 250 m 250 m now i can size that branch now i can size that branch 229 liter per second okay 229 liter per second 0.8 pascal per meter see when in, in real scenario when you are doing the project in a single time the duct sizing will not finish when you are doing it again you sometimes two or three times you have to redesign the duct system as per okay because why i'm saying means you did this one starting duct you did this branch also next you will be coming and you will be doing 450 liter per second branch then you will find a duct there size there then after that you will be sizing this 229 so 229 when the height is not matching since we are having a flexible duct there then again this dimension 458 liter per second you have to redesign that's why directly after finishing this part i went to 229 okay then i will be as per this height i'll be sizing this one anyhow sid 229 liter per second 0.8 pascal per meter since the flexible duct that i am going to connect in the height is 200 minimum height i need there is 250 so there is 250 other dimension i'll be getting 250 so 250 250 perfect aspect ratio one i am getting there perfect okay that is 250 250 okay actually in malayalam we are having a sarcastic song called the perfect okay in covid time there was 
I guess Ma- Malayalis can understand, right? Okay, just I remember that. 250, 250, fine, fine, fine. Now this one, what about this one? See this one. Uh, now we can size this 458 liter per second. 458 liter per second. See, since this branch is having a height of 250, this branch is having a height of uh, 250, this branch should have at least 300. Then only the collar you can, shoe collar you can connect there. If it is a T joint, okay, if this is 250, this also can come 250. But normally we are using tap joints only, tap. So since this is 250, collar if you want to connect, this should be minimum 300. Try to make aspect ratio 1 if it is possible. So anyhow, maximum height I can go up to 450 only. Anyhow, 458 liter per second, size it. 458 liter per second. Minimum height, since this branch is having a height of 250, this should have a 300. 250, this one should be 300. Other dimension getting 350. Okay, that's the best, best one. If you want to make aspect ratio 1, you have to make this as 325, 325. Not possible. So 300, when I am providing other dimension, you will be getting 350. That is okay. You can use that. What you can do? Height you can decrease into 300. Width you can make 350. Okay, so I'll be making this as 350, 300. Fine. 350, 300. So possible, right? So width will be decreasing from 500 to 350. Height will be decreasing from 450 to 300. Since this is 300, maximum permissible height is 250 here. No, that is okay. What about here? 450 into 150. 450 into 150. Anyhow, now... When we are connecting there, this duct will be coming like this. Then we can make uh, an elbow there. Then we can connect. But if you want to connect an elbow like this, then you have to connect it. The width should be minimum how much? Perfect. Otherwise, the elbow like a reduced elbow you have to use there. Correct. Means because this branch is having a height of Hello, this one, which one? Width of 350 only, but here we need minimum how much? 450. Elbow is not practically possible there. That's why I will be using shoe collar only. This one also means the same 350, 300. See, after this, you can see we are having very limited distance only. Only for this distance, you don't want to decrease the ducted dimension. I will be trying shoe collar only here. So that's why after this tap joint, after this tab joint, if you want to decrease your ducted dimension, you can do that. But in this region, we are not having that space. Means after the tab joint, we have to extend this into 150 mm. Then the taper connection has to. We have to connect the shoe collar. So we are not having that. Which one? Uh, that distance. We are not having the distance. So that's why uh, I will not be decreasing it. At the same 350, 300, I will be extending up to here. Okay. Fine. So the same only I'll be using there as well. I'm not changing it. Only for small distance, it is not mandatory. Okay. Fine. Now, let me make it make a two-dimensional layout. Okay. Starting mouth angle, I'll be taking 45 degrees. So since this is uh, 500, 450. So O ender. Not HVAC, SAD, text. I need HVAC, SAD. Okay. Now, O ender offset. What is offset distance? Offset distance width is 500, so you need 250. 250 there, 250 here. Okay. Select polyline. From the mouth, I want to make it. Okay. What approximate distance? 800 or something you can find. Anti-clockwise direction, 0, 90, 190, 190 plus 45. So shift at approximate distance of 800 I am taking. Angle, 190 plus 45, that is 225. Okay. Just opposite side. You can mirror it. Otherwise, in the opposite side, you can make it from here. Angle is 90 plus 45, 135. So shift at approximate distance of 800. Angle 135. Okay. That is my mouth. Now this one you can trim here and here. This one you can trim here. Okay. Now you can mark the polyline. Now trim it at here, double ender. Unnecessary line actually. That is my taper. 
Taper angle, I have taken 45 degree. Any angle less than 45 degree is okay. Maximum 45 only. Now this one, shoe collar I should make 450. 450 means 225, 225. So offset ender, 225 ender, 225 this side, 225 this side. So this is 450 only. Okay. Shoe collar distance, up to 600, the distance you can take 150. But if the space is very restricted, 100 is also fine. Above 600, you should go for 200 mm. DW 144. Please practice the drafting class if you have missed it. So I'll be taking 150 only. Oh, enter. 150 enter. Okay. From this point, I need to make this TR double enter. Okay. Polyline. I need a 45 degree in the backwards. So 270 plus 44. So shift at the approximate, approximate distance of 500. Angle. 270 plus 45, 315, anti-clockwise. TR double ender, trim this one, this one, this one. Now you can trim these two parts. Now here you can see you will be having a rigid duct drop there. So let me mark that rigid duct drop. Okay. So to represent that one, you should make a rectangle. Next size, how much? 375, comma, 375. Okay. Now you should make like a two cross mark there to represent supply drop we are representing two cross mark now this one you can copy with respect to the midpoint you can place it in the middle side of the fuses here one here one there i don't want because there i'll be trying plenum box only there. now after the plenum box okay means after this one we should extend that into 150 mm then you have to close it correct now the duct edge is open only, but we should extend that into 150 mm, then we have to close it. Okay, so O under offset, 150 under, I'll be extending this into 150, EX under boundary, this one and this one, okay. TR double ender, this one and this one you can trim, these two lines you can delete. Now, I don't want the central line. Now, this one you can mirror in the opposite side. Mirror. With respect to the center point I need in the opposite. I don't want to delete anything there. So, TR double ender. Trim this thing. Now, the middle line that I am having, we can delete. Okay. Now, after making the shoe collar, this distance you have to make into which one? Uh, 150 mm. O ender, 150 ender. I'll be extending this into 150. Now TR double ender. I'll be trimming this one. Okay. Now I don't want this line as well. TR, this two as well. Because the width is different now. This is 350 only. 350 means 175, 175. So offset, 175 ender. 175 there, 175 there. Now what is a taper? Bottom straight Eccentric taper you can try. What's the taper length? See, by calculation I told, concentric taper, width 1 minus width 2 multiplied by 7 divided by 4. Eccentric taper, width 1 minus width 2 multiplied by 7 divided by 2. You can follow that calculation. Otherwise, we can try. First, you can offset into 150. Then you can offset into 300. Then you can offset into 450. But the taper angle should be less than 22.5 degree. Whether that is concentric or eccentric. Anyhow, here we will be using eccentric only. Height difference is there. Here we are having a height of 450. Here we are having a height of 300. So since the width and the height is both, it is changing. Height bottom straight we need. Then only uniformly we can like install it, right? In the drafting classes we have studied that. That's why eccentric only I am trying. Whatever it may, I need the angle, taper angle less than or equal to how much? 225. Anyhow, I'll be trying 150 now. Offset O ender, 150 ender, 150 I am offsetting here. Then try that taper angle from here to here. This angle should be less than or equal to 22.5. Here, here I am getting 27. So 150 is not fine. I should go for 300 there. 300 is not okay, you can go up to 450. These are the standard dimension. 600 is also there. O ender means 6 inch, 12 inch, 18 inch, 24 inch. 150, 300, 450, 600. Okay. Offset. What distance? 300. 
three hundred will be okay there. TR double ender. This one. This one. Okay. Select the polyline. What about this taper angle? Check it now. Now we are getting that as fourteen degree. I can go up to twenty two point five degree. Fourteen only is coming now. Three hundred length is fine for taper. Okay. So select the polyline. This also I'll be close it. Now TR double ender. This one. This one. This one. Okay. Now what about this? Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty means O ender. One twenty five. 125. Okay, this distance you can take 150. Even if if you are taking 100 mm, that is fine because it is not a big duct. So 100 mm also you can try. Oh, up to up to two up to 600 mm, 150 above 600, 200. That's a standard length. But even if if you are going for 100 mm for small duct, that is fine. Site restriction also that is fine. Available 100 mm. Okay, so I don't want 150 there. I'll be trying 100 mm. Okay, then uh, angle 45 shift at approximate distance of 300 angle 315 degree. Okay, TR double ender unnecessary lines we can trim. Fine, TR double ender now this one delete this. Okay, fine. Okay, now these lines we can now let me. Extend this branch, EX center, boundary, this one, this one. What about this branch? 450 only. No? 450 means that is uh, 225 enter, 225 here, 225 here. So this distance 150 or enter, 150 enter, we can offset that. Now from this point, you can trim the unnecessary lines. From here, I'll be making a uh, which one approximate distance shift at uh, let's say 350 angle uh, say 45 trim this one and uh, this one this one this one okay now after this one after finishing this one I should extend that into 150 mm so O ender 150 ender okay now this duct you can extend no unwanted things we can trim this this one okay delete 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 this one even this branches i need i'm just making a line there Now I should offset that into 150 mm O ender, 150 ender. Okay. Now EX ender destination boundary. This one, this one. Also this one, this one. Okay. Trim this. This one, this one. Now unwanted lines we can trim there. So I don't want middle line. We can remove the middle. Now here, first I can size my plane up. See, two hundred dia, two flexible duct. Anyhow, next size is how much? Three seventy five only. Next size is three seventy five. So what about my plane box there? Say, anyhow. So this is my plane box. What dimension I need for that planar box? Anyhow, since the next size is 375 minimum, this side I need 375. Okay. This side also I need 375. When I am placing this one, this I need 375. This I need 375. Then only I can connect it. Correct. Planar. Bottom side I need that one. But in the duct side here, this side I should connect two flexible duct. The diameter of flexible duct is 200 mm. So, First flexible duct, second flexible duct. So what's the length? Anyhow, for this flexible duct, collar, here I need 25 mm hammering elements. 
here also i need 25 mm hammering elements correct so here i need 25 mm then flexible duct diameter 200 mm then hammering elements 25 plus for this one here i need 25 mm elements correct so that is the 25 mm hammering elements of this one plus then the diameter of the second flexible duct 200 mm plus 25 mm hammering elements 25 so overall distance how much i need 200 plus 200 that is 400 plus 25 1 2 3 4 100 mm correct means 50 25 25 so actually this distance 375 is not possible there if you want to connect the flexible duct this distance minimum i need 500 mm width i am saying any dimension higher than 500 is fine what about the height height of this plenum we can't show in uh, this one where in the plan Correct. this one since the flexible duct diameter is 200 minimum height i need 25 mm hammering elements top side 25 mm hammering elements bottom side so minimum height i need 250 mm there even if, if you are making that as 300 350 400 any dimension higher than 250 is fine 300 you can make no problem 300 you can make 200 is the flexible duct okay 25 minimum here 25 minimum there fine or if you want to make a 50 in the top side 25 mm in the bottom side okay so 200 plus 75 200 50 mm elements in the top side 25 in the bottom side 275 275 is not possible now you have to make that as 200 300 so correct so height minimum 250 even if you are making that as 300 fine okay so that's why uh, our dimension of plenum box okay one side is this side is 375 375 you can make 375 exactly it is not possible correct because here uh, rigid is not possible we should make like this middle when you are looking from the top side they should come like this this is 500 mm this is 500 mm okay this side how much we need that we, sh we should find now this one this side is okay height is also okay now this is a problem 375 see so anyhow when we are making in the middle that will come like this if you are making 375 this is 375 this is 500 correct it's a midpoint so diffuser through this you can take it only hold correct that's why 375 the connection uh, will be difficult there because hammering elements and all if you want hammering is not mandatory there but even though the space is restricted no so you can normally that plenum you can make like this in that portion it will be coming like this correct means like this it will come so the diffuser will be placing there on the middle side so diffuser next size is 375 okay then uh, 25 mm here you can consider 25 mm here you can consider means this is 375 no? so this straight duct this one has to bend here and it has to bend like this it has to bend here and it has to bend there so that's the minimum uh, distance we need that's why next size is 375 here 375 so 25 mm allowance here 25 mm here so 375 plus 25 400 plus 25 425 425 it's not possible you can make that into 450 so even if one side you are getting 375 you can round that into 450 okay so the plenum we need okay 500 or 450 into 500 into height last 250 250 you can make 300 250 is the minimum here we are having enough height no 250 is the minimum we need so it's a plenum box 450 when you are looking from the top side you can see that is 450 500 correct okay so let me uh, mark it
अपि प्लीनम बॉक्स प्लीनम बॉक्स दैट इज फोर फिफ्टी फोर फिफ्टी बाय फाइव हंड्रेड बाय थ्री हंड्रेड where the height is coming there you have to put a bracket and you have to mark like this okay so plenum box that i need there make it now okay i'm just making the plenum box with this 450 comma other dimension is 500 okay 450 this is 450 450 this dimension is 500 anyhow from the this is the last point from here 25 mm hammering elements okay so o enter 25 then my flexible duct will come there flexible duct diameter is 200 mm so o enter 200 enter okay then same way other side 25 mm in this side o enter 25 then the flexible duct diameter o under 200 so in between two flexible duct here we will be having a gap of 50 mm now what about this here i am marking my plenum not plenum i am collar collar distance 2 inches okay means if you are making a line like this i need 2 inches so o under 2 inches means 50 mm 50 under you can mark that as okay now delete it tr double ender this one this one this one this one this one okay so this is my collar three numbers 450 500 height is 300 to 200 i have flexible duct i am just making a diagonal because i need to get the center line select it copy with respect to this one i am placing this in the top side okay now i can delete it that is my you know now i should place the collar here as well okay before that i have to make the flexible duct what's a flexible duct diameter 200 mm okay so 200 dia flexible duct i should make first i am making the profile of flexible duct okay so i am taking a polyline 200 mm flexible duct profile fixed flexible duct we already made in the drafting session but let me repeat So twenty five first twenty five, okay twenty five mm. Then the diameter of flexible duct two hundred under. Then again this side that is twenty five under. Here it is two hundred under. And after that, from the midpoint you can make a twenty five, twenty five. Then you can join these two from here, then there, then there. this one you can mirror it in the opposite side okay there's a single profile now i have to create a path minimum four five vertices you have to provide i am selecting spline cv or spline fit i am selecting this one path i am making ortho should be turned off there path first vertices second click third click fourth one fifth one okay one more Sixth one, because if you are having more vertices, flexibility will be more. No, so that's why. Now, what I am doing, I am placing my flexible duct pattern here. Now I can array it, path array. Select your object, okay? A R ender array. What array? Path array. Select the path. So that is my flexible duct. now i can select this one i'll be moving slightly there now by clicking the middle line you can increase the length of this one you can adjust like this okay fine now i have to connect this one here before that i should connect the collar in the duct itself see if you are having only one flexible duct there only one flexible duct 
then in the flexible duct you can provide an rvcd that will adjust which one the flow rate or instead of that here in the branch if you are providing rvcd this one also will adjust even if it is a, a two number of flexible duct since it is connecting the single plenum so when you are providing the volume control damper either here you can provide the volume control or here you can provide any one because here it is connecting to the single uh, plenum only even if it is a two dif different uh, flexible duct, duct the two different flexible duct is connecting to two different diffuser then both the diffuser the airflow has to be adjusted then both the flexible duct plenum flexible duct collar we have to provide rvcd so in that scenario if you are providing a single vcd here after the volume control of this vcd again the volume changes may happen so that's why both the flexible duct we should provide a volume control tamper there rvcd but in, in this case both the flexible duct are connecting to the single plenum box only so that's why what we can do uh, a, a single volume control tamper here is more than fine otherwise here we have to provide both the plenum but if you are if you are planning to provide a rvcd here okay then the length has to be increased correct so when you are considering the rvcd this is rvcd blade only rvcd blade so this is a center axis of blade so when you are adjusting it this rvcd sometimes if it is straight the blade will be straight or sometimes it might be closing the airflow rate so what's the maximum distance it can even if if you are having a blade like this when it is fully straight when it is fully straight since the diameter of uh, this collar or the flexible duct is 200 mm rvcd is also 200 mm only 200 mm means with respect to the axis 100 mm here it will move 100 mm here it will move that's why minimum length of rvcd will come 200 mm there correct for example, if you are having, what is the length of length of RVCD? Minimum 4 inches we will be considering. But actually it will vary with respect to the diameter. Correct. For example, this is our RVCD. For, if this is 200 mm. Means the diameter of collar or this that is 200 200 means for example if they are if you are considering here this one sorry say this one this is 200 mm from the axis 100 mm here 100 mm there only no so what about this length minimum length will come 200 mm no. diameter equal to diameter so that's why so if you are providing a volume control damper with the collar then the collar distance you should mark how much 200 mm 20 centimeter length should come then only to it some manufacturers will be having the length less than that i told the logic but as i told since it is a, a single branch i'll be providing volume control damper here only and here i'll be providing just a two inch two inch collar two inch collar i'll be connecting then i'll be connecting the flexible duct okay so let me take a line between these two this one just to get the center line and this one i'll be i need to mirror it with respect to the center point Okay. Now I have to connect my flexible duct. So let me copy this, rotate. Move it, rotate again. Make it smaller. I made a bigger one. Uh, 
ओके नाउ सेलेक्टेड कॉपी इट रेस्पेक्ट टू द सेंटर पॉइंट लेट मी प्लेस इट देयर ओके नाउ सेलेक्टेड प्लेस इट इन द मिड पॉइंट एडजस्टेड ओके द सेम वे हियर आल्सो okay so that is my flexible duct now we can select this copy with respect to this point and we placing in the heads okay so two number of flexible duct i have connected but you can see this distance i have taken 25 that's why it is very near if we want to decrease this projection instead of 25 if we want to make it like a 15 or 20 this projection so then we will be getting enough gap between this flexible okay so two number of flexible duct i have connected now in the planum i should mark that so flexible duct 200 mm dia two numbers two numbers 200 mm dia okay so let me make a copy i'll be connecting labeling later we can do but otherwise we will forget it keep it there okay now after connecting the flexible duct the duct has to be extended to 200 mm sorry 150 mm now the duct you can tear double end delete fine so we finished one room now it's not finished now what all things thermal insulation acoustic insulation labeling scheduling everything we have to do okay so one room training room one we have finished approximately means design plus drafting but it's a very small room okay we can start. later we will be next session i'll be doing this discussion room discussion room 1 2 3 but here yeah, by the help of vav box we will be doing it